Mark here at Lone University. Welcome to Lesson 62. This is using open strings to change positions. And so what I just played is a little five chord lick. I'm going through five separate arpeggios, starting with E minor, F sharp minor, G major, B minor, and concludes at C major. Everything I played is in your lesson PDF, so please follow along with that. So what we're doing here is we're basically taking a normal multiple octave arpeggio. So if I just took the third one, I played G major. <laughs> One, three, five octave. And you know, if you tried to play it all fretted notes like that, it, it would be impossible at the speed I did do it at. It'd be really choppy and it would just sound very interruptive as far as what you're playing. So what this involves is taking a bass line or something you already know, or something you're writing and you're trying to figure out how to get it from one end to the next, or you know, or in a more immediate setting, using it in a bass fill or a bass solo. You know, you're doing a lot of work up here, but you gotta get down here really quick. We talked about in the art of the bass of course, you can slide out of it, but let's say you don't even have to do that. Let's say you can naturally use a note and get back to the end of the neck and it sounds seamless. So you're just taking a note that exists in something you're already playing, retranscribing it to an open string. So that would be like taking a fret five on the D string and just using open string instead. It frees up this hand and allows you to move. So if something you're playing is all eighth notes and you have this fret five on this D string, but you need to get up here, you can change it from this to this, and that one eighth note time will allow you to play that open string and move your hand up here. So let me show you the third example, the G major one, and show you basically how I got to that. So if we did the same root, third, fifth octave arpeggio, you know the shape, and then up here, starting on fret 10 on the A string. I would basically be replacing this fret five on the A string, this D, with this open D, and that little bit of time that frees up my left hand allows me to get in place to do the next shape. So instead of trying to do it all fretted, you just can't do it without sounding really rigid, you can put that open string in. Allows you to do it much quicker, it sounds very smooth. So all the arpeggios I played starting this lesson on basically use the same concept, okay? Like I always say, this comes back to always knowing the notes on the fretboard. You have to know what notes you're playing because you have to replace those with, you know, something that's equal as an open string. So the only limitation, I guess, with this would be is if you don't have an open string that exists on the note you want to use, you can't use it. So if you're playing a six or seven string bass, you have way more options than someone on a four string bass like I am now. So a good example of where I used this recently that would show an application uh, is a song called Atlas Novus from my band Scale the Summit. If you listen to us, there's a bass break in the middle of that song. I'm going to play it real slow. So one part of it goes. Okay. And you can see right there that I'm spending some time up here, kind of around fret 7, 8, 9, and 10. And the last part of that bass break exists all down here. It's really fast. At regular tempo, it's da 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 So at a speed like that, you can't have one of these rigid slides or you know something that's all fretted. You want to use an open string to transition. It's going to ring out a lot longer. It's going to sound like the note value is its complete value, and it's seamless and smooth. So let me demonstrate that again. There it is. I'm up here, I'm kind of in this position, open, change this position, now I'm down here. So a great way to practice this and being good at this, uh, there's a lot of challenges that come up. More than the left hand, the right hand is what's getting a lot of the work. It's a lot of mechanical work here on the right hand. You have to have a good control in your raking. Lots of raking lessons here, please check them out. String skipping as well. It's kind of a marriage of both of those two. And the tricky thing is, is that normally when you reach it for an open string, it's, it's a lot farther away than where you, you might be at normally. It's kind of like going out of the way uh, in a non-practical manner to get to a string. If I'm playing a bass line that exists all down here, Now, these are all adjacent. I'm using the E, A, and D strings. But let's say I wanted to change this fret five on the D string to an open G, it would be, I'd have to jump really high to get that open G string. So this is kind of an out of the way thing. And if you watch my right hand on the right hand cam, playing the first part of the thing I did in this video, you'll notice that it looks very uncomfortable. And it really is uncomfortable. But it allows you to get from one end of the neck to another 
without much effort. And that may be what it takes. So how I recommend practicing these examples is obviously the arpeggios are easy. You've, been, you've probably been playing arpeggios a long time now. You know, simple things that are just like... Or, or. But the trick is not the arpeggios or the speed, it's that open string transition. So if I were to go through each of these arpeggios and show you the transition spots I want you to work on, that will allow you to do these, and that's what I want you to focus on because that's undoubtedly the hardest part about it. So if we start with this first E minor one, the transition string is this open G string, so it goes, there it is. So it's a three note grouping I want you to work on, the note before the open string, the note of the open string, and the note after the open string. So let's go real slow. Note before the open string, open string, note after the open string. So you want to practice going between those three notes, so it kind of sounds like this. This is your transition, the toughest part of the whole thing. So if I kind of put that same little drill inside of the arpeggio, you would want to kind of go through it like this. Do it five times. Just like that. And the same one, the F sharp minor one, it starts right off with those first three notes. Open string, and then it goes. So you want to practice those three notes before, on it, after. Practice runs in it, and then keep going. And the B minor one, same thing. Starts right off with the three notes you want to practice. C major one, same thing. Three transition notes. So you get the idea. It's how it goes, it's really easy to do, and it may be uncomfortable really on both hands, but it allows you to have much more mobility around the neck. Have fun with it, check out the lesson PDF, you can do these as fast as you want, no tempo marking because you may want to start slow because this might feel a little weird on your plucking hand, but give it a shot, work it up, and work this into your playing. I want all of this stuff to be applicable to your playing. I don't want this to just be a lick you do and be like, oh, that's cool. I want you to go through things you may you know, something you're working on that you may have trouble fretting, you may put an open string and make it way easier. I do this all the time. You know, you're looking at tabs online and the person that transcribed it really sucks at transcribing and, and you're looking at the fingering and you're like, how, how is this even possible? So you can have to go through and rework the fingering. And a lot of times I find myself using this concept to make a riff, you know, playable. So you never know when you may need it. Have fun and we will see you next time.